Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward, and we are broadcasting from Ventura, California. Uh, most of the team is here. Helm is not here. Did he get lost? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? I <laughs> yep. just heard he's looking for a Honda station wagon. He is. So he maybe, probably... maybe he found one. So he did, he's not joining us. Yeah, he probably found a couple of them. Who knows? All right. We will wish him luck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is here. We got Beth is here. Gabe is here. Yep. Dan is here. Hey. And our guest is here. Christina Jimenez, yeah. thank you for joining welcome. us this morning. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Actually, you know what? People, <laughs> people, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Because here's what I do every week. At the end, I give our tip line. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to change that up because I don't think, has anybody actually made one. it to the end of one of our shows? One. One person. Yeah, but he wanted to sell us uh, uh, real estate in Florida. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to put the <laughs> We're going to put the tip line at the top. Just in case you've never made it to the end of one of our shows, we have a tip line. Go to our website, westoftulsa.com, and there's a page called the tip line. You can just click on that, fill it out. We'd love to have you in studio, or maybe we'll go to you, depending on where you are. But we'd love to hear your story. That's what we're all about here, stories, right? That's and Christina great. has a great story, so we're going to mm-hmm. get the hurt. <laughs> so tell us, um, most people would know you on social media as Lane Drifters. Yes. Right? Yes. And... Explain what that is. How did you come up with the name? And Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Well, like back in the day, uh, late 90s, um, I was really into JDM, particularly uh, import drag racing was kind of the thing before the Fast and Furious. Came yeah. Out. yeah. Um, so I was also really like fascinated by drifting which at that time was mostly big in japan it hadn't really made its way here yet so um i i don't know the lane drifters kind of was a name that i think i started out as an old email address i was using <laughs> it just kind of morphed into this i just kind of started to use the name and with socials and things like that it just i was just lane drifter i think it's a great name yeah but real quickly yeah. It's a yeah, great just name. for people like me who don't know what drifting is i, knew this I was do coming. know what we gotta know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what is yeah. drifting the practice of drifting Tom wants to know too he doesn't so, know <laughs> <laughs> okay well here's the funny thing i've loved drifting most of my life but only recently have i started to get more into it um i i used to do a lot of drag racing and then it went from that to like track racing and now it's like into drifting so i'm still learning a lot about it i've only um gone to i've actually only been in one event where i rented a drift car because i didn't even have a drift car (laughs) um but basically it's it's like track racing but there are a lot more corners and it is an art of drifting around a corner and and making your way out into the next corner uh you burn a lot of tires <laughs> in drifting uh it's an expensive sport um but it's so much fun so much adrenaline um and like i said i've done so much racing over the years and this one for some reason when i do ride alongs with friends uh it's I'm like, my adrenaline is just going for like mm. maybe a couple hours. <laughs> and I think for Beth, Beth, she's, you're, you're wondering, is the car slide? Yeah, it's a sliding. Okay. Slide. So, yeah. I'm yeah. picturing driving down the 101 and all of a sudden you get to a work construction obstacle and that there, you don't you don't incorporate drifting there <laughs> no no and you should, basically you <laughs> like <laughs> with track racing it's like a grip thing where you want a, as much grip as you can get and you stay on the track uh and a lot of times when we do track racing they always warn you don't be doing any of that drifting stuff here yeah this is grip this is grip racing you must be talking about streets of willow yeah streets <laughs> in particular um but yeah so drifting you're it, and that was the hardest part for me when i did my first event is my my brain didn't quite comprehend that I needed to slide. Yeah. So I just wanted to take the corners and, and grip and and it's kind of the opposite of that. Yeah. So So yeah. the way I like to describe it, and I don't know if this, this would be accurate, is kind of it's kind of like car ballet because it's not who gets to the finish line first, although yes. there is some of that it's and you get judged. Mm-hmm. So there's a panel of judges that watch, you know, how you come into the corner at what speed you come in and you know if you're doing it solo or doing it tandem with another car yes it really yeah. it truly is kind of like a ballet i think because it, it, it's about the form it's not so much about who's the fastest that's right or whatever you know so that's the it's difference. highly technical very technical oh it's, it's very technical it's very really technical, technical yeah, style yeah. Of it almost sounds like surfing you know it's, yes. It's, yes. Kind of yes dropping yes. into this yes. wave yes. But yes. 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 ballet is an excellent way of saying that especially when it comes to tandems because with tandems 
not a lot of people do tandems. You have to be very comfortable with the driver that you're doing yeah. a tandem with. Right. Um, because a lot of times you touch, yeah. you're that close to each other. Yeah. When you go around corners, you're you're following each other basically. Yeah. So you have to have a good relationship with the driver. Um, and you have to have pretty good experience under your belt for tandem driving. Yeah. But tandem driving is one of the most funnest things to watch. Yeah, especially they, they, they just do it like not just two, they'll do four or more oh cars, yeah. like all in sync with each other. There's like yeah. team sports. I think a final bout does that. You know, there's a, a group mm -hmm. <clears throat> here in the United States that they do these. It's because it's been popular in Japan for. Oh, yeah. decades probably yeah. mm -hmm. and um it just when it came to the states it kind of like blew up you know and everybody got into it because you don't have to have a very fast car you need good tires mm -hmm. and brakes obviously and a, a seat and pretty much anybody could go uh drifting mm -hmm. you don't need a, a thousand horsepower car you know you don't need to have the most power it is expensive i think all car and there's a bit of a setup to the car to get yeah. it yes. to drift yes uh, the yes. right way yeah yeah there is suspension that is yeah. very important uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. drifting uh people need angle kits sometimes so they can get the right you know fit all that uh, you know, it's, i've never done it before but um and i've always wondered when you're drifting since it is so technical when you're getting ready to take that turn and go into the drift mm -hmm. I mean, when you're starting off doing it, I would imagine that's got to be a difficult. Yeah. One of the most difficult things is getting that car into that motion. Yes. Talk about yeah. that a little bit. because Well, so I'm still learning. So, <laughs> <laughs> And that's the thing with me. I, um, I really, to be honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about it yet. I'm still mm -hmm. learning. I, I've only done a couple ride alongs with people who know a lot about drifting and it's, it's a lot of um, steering. Steering is obviously what it is all about. Like you have to know how to steer and, uh, you know, the whole clutch kick versus like if you have an e-brake. There's there's just so much to it. And I like I said, I'm still learning. I rented a drift car the last time I did it. And there were things in the car where I was like, OK, well, what does this do? And he's <laughs> like, well, don't touch that yet. You're not ready for that. And I'm like, yeah. OK. Um, it was an ejection seat, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In case you screw it up it so badly, look, yeah. boom, hit that button. It, most of the stuff in there looks like that, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Um, I I always recommend that if you're gonna get into drifting, just like for me, I started out on a skid pad. You know, you try and do some donuts, so some figure eights, just to get used to it. The um, control, the control, the control of yeah, things. Yeah. yeah. Is there a little a slope elevation? It's not all flat when you're going into um, this. Or no, well. It, it depends. depends on the track. Some yeah. tracks are different. Uh, I know the one that I went to was Apple Valley Speedway, and that one is it's pretty flat. Okay. Um, but like uh, Willow Springs has a few different tracks there. Like Horse Thief is mm -hmm. one of the tracks that they do a lot of drifting on, and that one does have some elevation here and there. So that one's a little more tricky, from what people have told me. I've not been on that one yet. But are you accelerating? Are you slowing down as you go into the actual? Oh uh, well, the. It depends. Well, again, on the tracks, I guess it depends. But when you are lining yourself up for the first corner, like at Apple Valley, I mean, you get a ton of speed going into it. That's really what you want to set yourself up. Um, What's a ton of speed? Well, I think when I went with my last ride along, I think she was going probably about 40 uh, on that on that particular entry. Um but it just depends, again, on the track and how much room you have mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Um, I mean, some some of those guys, <laughs> they go really fast. Yeah. It's I mean, the pole, they're, they're up at the 80 mile an hour. Yes. The turns, yeah. You know, and then they're kicking the rear end out, you know, and they're drifting around it. So speed does matter because you get yeah. judged on speed, you know, but, you know, angle and how you exit the turn. Yes. There's a lot of right. things that are, that you get judged on and there's different ways to do it. Everybody has a different way of doing things. You know, it would be the yeah. clutch kick or the right. e-brake or the faint drift or whatever. Yeah. There's, it's, it's all about style you know and yeah. preference too so it's technical but it's also style which i think yes. a, a lot of people really really like i never really got into it because i'm i just like speed so I'll, i just like drag racing you know but for the for the drifts i see the attraction to it because you you can have a low horsepower car um and still have an awesome drift car you know a lot of the guys who have the a86 corollas the real wheel drive corollas you know they don't have a lot of power but they're light cars they're fun right. to, you know so and every car is different you know so and again it may depend on the setup yeah 
yeah. how yeah. you set that car up. Yeah. yeah. And then the reaction when people see you get out of the car and you're a woman, you're this beautiful woman coming yeah. out and you just did all these <laughs> wonderful, cool moves. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny with drifting. I've only come out of a passenger door so far because I, <laughs> I mean, I've just been practicing, but um like the track racing and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot more women now. It's pretty amazing. Like the last track day I did at Will Springs, I think we had probably about six women out there, um, which is pretty good. I mean, when I started drag racing, there was maybe only one or two of us out there. You and Lisa Kubo, maybe? Lisa Kubo. So she's my men. She was my mentor. That's like, that was who I grew up with. I, wow. I went to the drag strip and she was out there wrenching on her car yeah. and <laughs> she was the one that I, that was really what did it. She was the woman who did it for me. And I told her to, when I first started Miss Motorhead, I was like, can I feature you on my page? Cause I want everybody to know that you were awesome. the one that did it for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, that's, would you say that's your strength in terms of driving? Would, would you just, would you talk, talk the, are you just like straight ahead? speed uh, yeah is so that I'm, what you're into i'm or? kind of an adrenaline junkie and i like yeah. to drive fast unfortunately i got a speeding ticket on saturday <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but as long as you didn't say it was coming here it was it, not it, no it, not coming it, here right. but um no yeah i i like driving fast so that's why i like track racing for a long time i like drag racing but drag racing was kind of boring for me mm. um it's you, there's just so much like like it was fun and exciting, and I think it is a good start to racing. But track racing was probably what I had the most fun because I could go really fast. And um, I haven't done any really big race tracks. Like I never did Big Willow. I always tended to do Streets of Willow, which is a little smaller. But um, yeah, I like driving fast. I also wanted to get into rally racing at one time because I'm big in the Subaru community, and I have a lot of girlfriends who do rally racing up north. And so I kind of wanted to get into that at one time. Um, but it's it, where we live, it's a little harder because a lot of the races are up north. So you have to drive five hours yeah. to go to a race. Whereas at least here I can go to a drag strip. I could go to streets. It's like two hours. Yeah. So, so yeah. What do you drive? What, what kind of cars do you like? You mentioned Subaru. So yes. what do you have? I know you have a yeah. nice wagon. Yeah. So I have my Subaru legacy wagon. Um, what's funny is I bought that car about 16 years ago because I had kids and <clears throat> they weren't fitting in my little 240. <laughs> <laughs> the car seats just weren't fitting anymore. And we wanted a, a wagon for the space for strollers and things like that. Um, but also I needed something with power cause I just, I am not a minivan person. So <laughs> I, I was like, I'm not doing a minivan. Um, but we found that wagon in San Diego and, um, it was actually from Hawaii. He was in the military. So I remember driving down there and picking it up and driving home in the pouring rain and it was so fast and it, and I got home and I remember being like, this does not feel like a family car. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> so, so yes, yeah, so I've had it for 16 years. Uh, it started out as my mom wagon. And then eventually as the kids got older um, and we started to kind of get back into racing a little bit more, um, I started to just soup it up a little bit more. And uh, now pretty much everything is built on the engine. It's kind of maxed out <laughs> except for uh, doing the shift to 85. I haven't done that. The, E85. E85, yeah. so. Is it the, it's got the 2.5? Yes. In there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What did you drive here today, by the way? I forgot to ask. That. Yeah, so I today I brought the 240, which is, uh, that's a funny story. So um, the 240 was basically like my first real car. Um, I had hand-me-downs as <laughs> like a young girl. Like I remember I did my driving test in my 1964 Plymouth Fury 2. Oh. It was a massive boat. <laughs> it had the curb feelers on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I did my driver's test in that, and I loved that car. It was fun. I could fit like 10 of my friends in that car. So did I went. Did you drift in it during no. the driver's test? <laughs> no, right. that never happened. Um, that car literally felt like driving a couch yeah. down the road. <laughs> the living room. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was fun, though. I love that car. Um, but my first real car that I actually bought myself was the 240 in 98. I bought that car. And um, I remember it was funny because I couldn't drive manual yet. <laughs> and so I remember I took uh, my ex at the time and we went up to Shaver in Thousand Oaks. That's where it was. 
and he actually had to drive it home and i was so sad because i'm like <laughs> this is so sad this is my first like real car and i can't even drive it home from the dealership oh, that's funny <laughs> but uh. we made it home and then I, I the next day i started driving and so so that's technically my first car and um i had and that's the car that I did my import drag racing in at the track. Typically, it was LACR back in the day. Oh, man. Uh, Palmdale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we did a lot of, like, events like Battle of the Imports. And oh, yeah. All the uh, hot auto. What is it? Auto Salon used to or hot auto import nights. Hot import nights. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Um, but, yeah. So, I had her for, like, maybe 12 years and that's again i had the kids and the car seats wouldn't fit in it anymore and i needed something more practical so i sold the 240 to a kid from las vegas and um, he came out with his family and um, bought it and i was so sad but it, it is what it is and and he had it for 10 years and i would say like the last few years um I was kind of stalking him a little bit on Instagram because <laughs> I kept telling him, like, if you ever sell it, please sell it back to me. I would love to have my car back. And so we we chatted about that for a few years. And finally, he was like, guess what? I think I'm ready to sell it back to you. Nice. And yeah, and that was um, October of 2022. Oh, so just got it back. I and just got it back, and he didn't tear it all apart. And no, and this is what's amazing. He's he's an amazing guy. He, um, I think, what for him, he he was getting closer to thirty, and he was kind of like, okay, I I I don't really have a lot of time to spend on it anymore. He bought it, and he literally parked it in his garage, and he just wanted to make it like just a great show car and clean and original. Mm. So he started like replacing parts and he would sometimes buy a couple parts at a time. So like when I picked up the car from him, he had boxes and boxes of wow. stuff. Wow. And it only he only put 8,000 miles oh on it. Oh my gosh. In the 10 years that he had it. It was Score right there. It was super clean and I remember when I got into it, uh he had pulled it out for me and I was like so excited. I'm like, "Oh my god, my car." I got into it and it still smelled the same. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my gosh, That's this is cool. this is too crazy. I can't believe I'm getting my car back." So it's kind of like a big story when I first got it back cuz everybody knew for years I was talking about how oh I wish I would have never sold it and I always like told yeah. everybody you know don't sell your cars because you know most of the time you don't get them back well, so most people have one of those yeah. stories you know yeah, like, yeah. Oh, and sell it so yeah so that's the car I brought today um, fair to say that it's in better sh when you picked it up from him it was in better shape than when you sold I it would him? say yes oh, yeah wow. he really he did a great job he restored a few things um, what's funny is he left the, my very first mod, which was the engine intake on it. <laughs> he left it there. So it's still on the car and it even still has the original, um, uh, sticker on it, emission sticker oh, wow. that says that it's 50 state legal. Yes. Yeah. Which it's not now, but <laughs> you never see those stickers anymore. So it's like, Oh, this is so cool. A throwback. <laughs> yeah. And you're working on a project right now. You said, are you working on something um, new? Or? No. So I, um, I want to get a drift car, so I have a friend who has a business that um, he sells a lot of the drift cars, and so he's possibly going to keep his eye out for a 350Z that I can get. Um, oh, those are really one. good, yeah. like, beginner drift cars. Oh, yeah. Um, they're, they're supposed to be a little easier to wrench on and get parts for, yeah. and they have decent power, really good suspension. So, um, so that's kind of what I'm gearing up to get. Um, but I also want to sell the Subaru because <laughs> I want to get another wagon. I, I really want to get maybe like, um, an Audi or a Volvo wagon. I want to get something a little more luxury, hmm. something that I won't race. <laughs> oh, Helm's wearing off on you. Yeah. It? Yeah. 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 If Helm was here, he'd say, get a Mercedes wagon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you see more cities and jurisdictions kind of dedicating land to racing and to, to to drifting and all these different types of sports. With no, cars. unfortunately, not in California. Less, no, less, not less. Not in California. Yeah, it's 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 unfortunate. Um, but I think a lot of it is is just too expensive. There's too much liability, and so I think a lot of people just kind of you know shy away from wanting to even start something like that. Yeah, so, there's more tracks closing than opening now. Yes, there so, is. Yeah. Uh, two Which, two big race tracks closed last year, and uh, it was. 
It's pretty sad. And that's been the problem for a long time. Yeah. California. But then you hear more and more about these illegal street takeovers, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Which they, is not racing no. or drifting. It's so, a bunch of hoonies are they, are they out trying there. To, are they trying to emulate a certain type no, of they're sport? Just, it's no, a, it's, yeah. I, I don't know what you would call it, you know, like sensationalism. They're, they're kind of like, they're just, you know, doing things for the shock value, maybe on Instagram or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's no real motorsport to it. I mean, sure, I'm sure some people that are for it that would argue that, but. It's just, it's, I think it does more harm than anything else, yeah. you know, and it makes a bad name for people like mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. who want to go drifting or who want to go racing, you know, and want to drive our cars on the street. You know, we're just not going to do it on the street. That's what the tracks are for, you know, and um, yeah, I just don't yeah. think it's a, it's a smart, smart thing to do. No, but. it's unfortunate. And, and it's luckily now, I think because the police really jumped on it, I think uh, it's going to start to happen a lot less like they recently um i think there was one that got shut down and they like fully arrested like 50 people yeah they brought a bus they bought a bus yeah Yeah. so i think eventually it it will diminish i'm hoping because i don't like the i just don't like the way that uh, people are really getting hurt and it yeah and and it's all over social media and it's it's just unfortunate that it's associated with all yep. people who like cars and yep. that is just not the case so yeah yeah, yeah so when it comes to legal car uh-huh. yeah legal acts stuff. and that's what yeah. you say japan is doing it right and doing it well or well who is well i mean mm. we are here it's just um like well, okay, so with drifting, I mean, there are some people who may just find a corner somewhere. And and also, too, like, okay, for me, I, I'm a huge canyon runner. I love canyons. That's one of my favorite things is driving the canyons. And, um, you know, I, I'm guilty of, like, probably going too fast in the canyons. But that's where I've learned a lot of my... Um, my driving skills is in the canyons, unfortunately, and that's not necessarily legal, but I obviously don't canyon run when there's a lot of people. Like I will tend to go really early in the morning. Not on the weekend. Yeah, not on the weekend. Are these, are these paved roads? Yeah, like yeah. 33, like okay. 33. Okay. I usually, that's like one of my favorite canyons. I know that road, uh, the ins and outs of when that road. When it's not washed out. When it's, exactly. Yeah. I've been sad because yeah. it was washed out yeah. That, yeah. that one time and it, I haven't actually been up there. Um, I... For anybody who doesn't know from our area, that's maybe Ojai. Yeah, yeah, Ojai. That's Ojai. 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 yeah it's a yeah. beautiful area. Too. Yes. I can imagine yeah. that would be a lot of fun to, to drive. It's a lot of fun, and I—that's um, one thing I, I didn't mention. I so I'm vice president of 805 Subarus, which is a car club locally here. It's an—it's um, pretty much 805, but it also expands a little further out. And so I tend to do a lot of canyon cruises where we'll all meet up somewhere for coffee, and then we'll go and do a cruise. Sometimes we have five cars. Sometimes we have 30 cars. Mm. Wow. So um, we've done uh, the 33 Canyon Cruise with the club one time. So I have pictures of like 20 Subarus coming around a corner. So we do a lot of stuff like that with the car club. Um, but yeah, Canyons. Uh, and it's funny. I do have a story for you. <laughs> canyon carving. I went on a camping trip to the Sequoias with our car club a few years ago and I had never been to the Sequoias before. So we woke up super early one morning, like six in the morning, we decided to do a canyon run around the Sequoias. And those are truly canyons. Oh yeah. (laughs) And they are amazing. And that was the best run I've ever done. And they, they run hard. So it was so much fun. And I was so inspired that I came home and that's when I designed my canyon carving art, oh. <laughs> which has been a big seller for me. I have beanies and T-shirts and wow. everybody I loves it. Hat. I think you've yes. got a hat. Um, yeah. Brian at, from Haggerty yesterday, he was wearing one of my beanies. And, oh, there you um, go. But stuff like that is what inspired me to do a lot of my design work, all the car stuff. So and this is all car- on Lane Drifters you can find? Yeah. So, so I had a business called Lane Drifters Apparel. A couple of years ago, and I was designing and selling stuff, but it's real. The t-shirt business is really hard because you have to constantly come up with new ideas. Mm-hmm. And so I went from that getting into Miss Motorhead and Miss Motorhead is more of a passion for me. So I kind of stopped doing the Lane Drifters apparel, but I have a few designs that are still big sellers, like the Canyon carving design. I have a 
t-shirt called Speed Nuts where it's drifting around a donut. So I have like that design that everybody loved. And then um, I did a rotary design that everybody loved because I had an FD. Yeah. And so I was big in the rotary community for a while. Um, so, so yeah, so I have a few designs still left. Um, and I do a lot of uh, work with car clubs. So I tend to design a lot of car club art and stuff for t-shirts and things still. So so I'll do that side of things, but when it comes to my business, I stopped doing the Lane Drifters apparel. So I do still have my Instagram. It's up and running. I just don't update it anymore like I should, but. So <laughs> the Miss Motorhead, that's your business yes. account? Yeah, right. the Miss Motorhead business. Basically, it started as a podcast. Um, uh, we we thought it'd be a great idea to interview all of the women in motorsports. And I have a lot of friends in motorsports. So I kind of started with my group of friends first. Um, and I did, I only think I got through about six or seven interviews before it shifted into me enjoying hosting and making events for women instead. Mm -hmm. So I started doing all female driven car shows and I started doing all female driven races at the track and I got such a great response and I started to get women who were like, thank you so much for doing this. Like makes us feel so comfortable that we can mm. come and like not be judged and uh, we can just be our own person and not worry about like guys being like in being intimidated by guys, yeah. which is a thing, unfortunately. But um, so I don't really do the podcast anymore. I, I would love to get back into it. But at this time, I love doing shows and I love doing yeah. events and I'm a pretty social person. So I'd much rather be out doing events than sitting sitting, sitting, sitting here like, all yeah, the yeah. Time. what we're doing right now <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> Beth is actually putting together a, she's tr she's planning a takeover i am yeah, I, I take all over. female oh. show. Remember? Oh yes. yes, well yes, yes, yes. yeah. Well, yeah. that's a given. She's kicking yes, us out. Yeah, she's playing. We'll do something Wait a fun with that. Uh, no, just... I know. I haven't told you guys yet, but it's coming. <laughs> Hold on, brace like this because it's coming. But we have to have Gabe's permission to do a female take. <laughs> oh, I, I, I highly, highly um, recommend this. Yeah, but, I think it'll yeah, be a yeah. lot of fun. But, I, I, but go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, not to state the obvious, but I would think that uh, Christina's our first female guest. Oh, awesome. Yes? Yes, so, which I think yes. is okay. awesome. Yes. And, you know, cool. well, well, thank well, you. <laughs> Elaine, but Elaine is the matriarch yes. of the museum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Is, that's right. Yeah, yes. I did see her. Yes, yes. Right. I'm, right. So, right. So I'm right. sorry. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Elaine but is. Yes. You know, but but the as, far as we start. know, Elaine has never drifted. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I bet you she has. I bet she didn't know that was called. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That would be a great story. She was driving a Subaru BRZ. Was she? Yes, she was. Really? Yeah. My grandfather bought that when he was 100 years old. And guess who's driving it now? Our, daughter, our oldest daughter. Wait, goes. what color is it? It's silver. silver. I think I've seen. You probably I have. think I have. I think I've yeah. seen her driving it. You probably uh, the, Maybe she has a, a, really ago, right? a caretaker also. Oh, okay. Yeah, she oh, okay. until a few okay. years ago she okay. was driving it. Yeah. That's awesome. But I have a quick question that. just yeah. for, for, for women uh -huh. and people who you are really connecting with mm -hmm. driving. Is it? Is it about being behind the wheel and the freedom to go wherever you want to go or the community of it all or the journey where it, I mean, what, what is it that you're finding the common thread with other women who are getting more and more involved with this? You know, um, really what it comes down to is women feeling comfortable in their, in their own skin. Like, um, especially with driving on a track, um, a lot of times they're just so afraid to make that step to get out there. But I've noticed with women that if they know there are other women there or women supporting them or like just taking them on a ride along to feel more comfortable, as long as they have that support and that the community there, that is a huge difference in their confidence. So women are more afraid of being judged by men than they are yes. crashing their car. Uh, with other women. It's true of some people. Yes. Some, some people are so uh, intimidated and, um, and I get that I was there back in the day. I was super intimidated to be at the drag strip cause it was all men at the drag strip. But I think, yeah. Um, when, and for me, I never really did this as like a moneymaker thing. I, it's my passion. It's my hobby. And so I like to help people. Like I'm just a natural, like people pleaser and a helper. And so 
when I go out to the track and I'm able to just give a little bit of advice or give a hug or have someone say like, oh my gosh, you're here. Thank God you're here. I, I didn't want to come. I was so nervous. Just stuff like that is like what makes my day. Mm. Totally makes my day. So, and for me, like life is all about just being happy. Like I, I'm not like a huge, like, oh, I do this for money or I do this for cloud or whatever. No, like, especially being a cancer survivor, I've learned that you just, you have to do what makes you happy. And I like making people happy and I like making people confident. I've taken my daughter out to an autocross when she first started driving and her confidence level after that was unbelievable. Mm. So yeah, I think, um, I, I love that there are women out there who can just step up and be like, I will help you. I will, you know, I'll help you do this. Or, you know, even if it's just, I've had people ask me just random stuff. Like, um, I want to buy this for my car, but I don't, I don't feel comfortable asking a guy for his opinion because they will sometimes judge me because I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. So like women will go to other women and ask like, what should I do about this on my car? And although just so you yeah. know, guys had the same issues. We're just better at hiding it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, oh, look confident like you've done this before. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So there's no difference. Just, and we get intimidated. You show up and there's some guy wrenching. It's like, God, I wish I could do that. I yeah. no, no, I don't I don't get intimidated at all. He's like, well, there's somebody that can work on my car because I don't and I don't have to hire do it. it. Yeah. If, find somebody better than you to work on your car. <laughs> would, would you say what would you say that the biggest um I guess, an intimidating thing or the biggest fear that women have just getting into it. Cause I, a female viewer watching this right now, would she, what do you think her biggest fear might be? And what would you say to that person to help her overcome? Cause I see what you're saying. I totally, and it, and it's like, okay, you, they might, a woman might be intimidated, but I'm thinking, well, why, why yeah. just do it? Right. You know, but there's things that I don't know. Obviously I'm not a woman, <laughs> you know? Well, okay. So, for instance, at the track, um, you know, it is a majority of men. And a lot of the times, like, for instance, as a driver, uh, when I'm on the track and I'm actually driving, this is what I try and tell a lot of women. When I'm driving, when you're out there, it's not men and women. It's other cars. Mm. You don't have that in your head when you're actually driving. So I keep telling people, just don't think about that. Cause when you're on the track, you're just looking out for the other cars. Doesn't you, when you have your helmet on, you can't even really tell who's driving. So I always tell them like, don't think about it like that. You know, don't, don't be too intimidated. Just know, like if you, if you are a beginner, start in the beginner's class. Don't think because your car looks like it's fast and it has a lot of power. It's the driver. So be in a beginner's class and just do your thing and make sure that you wave people by if you feel uncomfortable. Because a lot of guys will get pissed if a girl is out there and she's not waving people because you're really supposed to. That's etiquette. You're supposed yeah. to wave people by. Dudes do that too. Yeah, so. they do. Yeah. <laughs> I had that problem yeah, actually yeah. at the track yeah. last time. It's yeah. like golf. It's like any other sport, right? Yeah. Yeah. Stay in your lane until you're able to move into a fast Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And you'll probably yeah. have more fun if you do it that way, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because if you, yeah. if you bite off more than you can chew, yes. it's it could. I had the most fun in beginner yeah. class at, at Streets of Willow. And when my car was stock and I ran in the beginner class, it was the most fun because yeah. I'm learning things. Right. Because sometimes they'll have you have a, have a driver um, or instructor with you when you're doing the class. And mm -hmm. you're learning things that you didn't know before. Where there will be guys that go straight into the intermediate class that don't know nothing. They think they know everything and they end up being total clowns on the track. And they're like, dude, what's this guy doing here? <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, and the one thing that's great too, at least with Extreme Speed, who I work with a lot, they're one of my sponsors. Um, their beginner class that they do. Say their name yeah. again, just. Okay, yeah. We, we want you to get as much credit as you can. Uh, extreme Speed track events that um, Joel's been in the business for years doing track events, and so he he does a lot of hosting of track days um, at Big Willow and Streets of Willow. And Horse Thief as well. But um, he also runs a, um, a Subaru-themed track day called Subi Jam. So we get a lot of Subaru enthusiasts that come out for his stuff. But one thing I love about his events for beginner class um, is that they do this follow-along where on the very first time you run, there is a skilled driver as the first car. And then the cars all follow the, that driver so you can learn the line. Mm -hmm. So that way you know... They're trying to set you up to have the proper line for racing. And then the, what's great is you go around once and then the person that's behind him gets over and then the cars move up 
and you, you do that throughout the entire lap. So that way you learn the line, you're comfortable, um, you learn getting over, letting people go around you. And so I always felt that that was super important because not a lot of people do that on track days, um, depending on who's hosting it. So, so that was kind of cool. The girls enjoy that. Too. So. I keep thinking of our, our daughter, Katie. I think she would love this. I think she would, yeah. too. Yeah. And I'm even th- just thinking when she got her license and then we did the thing down at the Camarillo Airport mm-hmm. where they did the, the Porsche. The, it was Porsche. The that's Porsche right. Club. Porsche Club for safety yeah. mm-hmm. and spinning out and, and, you know, driving over pooled water and all these different yeah. things and how yeah. to get yourself out of obstacles. And right. Problems. Right. And that reminds me, too. So I just partnered up with my friend, Melissa who started a company called Karma Care, California. Um, she used to do it out in Colorado, but basically uh, we she gets a class together of women, and it doesn't have to be women. It can be young kids. It can be anybody who's a first-time driver. And she goes through the car and teaches them the basics of the car. Wow. So what do all these lights on the dashboard mean? And how do I check my tire pressure? How do I change my tire? What? How do I check my fluids? Just the basic stuff because n- they don't necessarily teach you that stuff. Yeah. When you do like driver's training. Yeah. So it's falling on a lot of dads. Yeah. Or yeah. moms. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, there's a lot of dads out there. There's the guys that don't know this stuff too. Right? Yeah. You know, unfortunately. You yeah. Know. It's it's true. It's true. But yeah. So she just had her first class at my shop a couple weeks ago, um, and it was it's great. great. Idea. It, great idea. It's yeah. a great and and she got such great feedback and actually Portia is going to partner up with her and host one of the events because they like the women to come out, the new Porsche drivers to come out and learn a little bit about the car. So she's going to do one there. And then we have an event on the 30th um, at the Haggerty Garage Social in Van Nuys. And it's a women in motorsports car show but after the car show she's going to do a class for that's awesome and i think she already like got a bunch of people who signed up for it so i get a quick story about katie in that porsche class so at one point so <laughs> th- this was held by the porsche club right the, the santa barbara porsche club and it's out at the camero airport and we showed up in my 1995 integra gsr five speed mm-hmm. she went through that entire class shifting and you know I mean, she was throwing the car around just the way they wanted her to. And I'm standing in the tent at one point with about 10 dads. And one of them goes, no, no, here it comes. Here comes the car. And here goes the, the, the Integra. There goes Katie. Look, she, she's shifting. She's shifting. She's <laughs> mad. I'm like, watch her. Watch like, her. Like they were surprised? They were stunned that she was, because everybody else had, you know, regular old automatics. And oh, just, right. And here she is. Mm, you, you could hear the way she was shifting. And. So that when we're driving home, I said, you know, you impressed a bunch of the dads. Yeah, that's She's awesome. like, what do you mean? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so I told her the story. She's like, she had this huge smile. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. That was a great car. So I think yeah, she, what you're talking about, I think she would love it. Yeah, she yeah. would. And she yeah. already has the Subaru. Yeah. So, so I always recommend um, if you're starting out, and especially if you want to get into track racing, I think autocross is the best way to start. I agree. That's kind of how, how I got into track racing. Well, you autocross. just did a nutshell on autocross. Yes. What okay. So I know there's so many different types of racing. So rally cross is different. That's like in the dirt and you're like on a course and that's kind of wild. Autocross is a little, little less harsh on your car. It's basically a cone course setup. Um, the one I first did was in Fontana, which is no longer it's yeah. tearing it down auto club speedway. Um, and they set up a small course. You typically are in first and second gear the whole time, but it's a lot of cornering, a maneuvering, getting used to the way your car feels. Um, super fun. They typically time it. Uh, so you can kind of like get, get yourself, you know, yeah. squared away and, and then get a little bit, a be- little better throughout the day. But that was, like I said, I took my daughter on that and she loved it. But yeah, I, I recommend if you want to feel comfortable with your car and, or if you have a kid and you want your kid to feel comfortable with your car, autocross is the way to do it. Yeah, I they usually do it in parking lots, sure. sometimes yeah, at airports. Exactly. Um, yeah, and yeah. Y- you don't really go too fast. Um, so in a sm- uh, cars with less horsepower are usually uh, better for that, you know, because um, you are in first and second gear. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really fun, too, because um, in most events, at least the ones that I've been to, um, not only do you, you know, can you participate, you actually need to volunteer to help pick up cones when people hit the cones. So it also helps you need to walk the track to learn mm-hmm. the track because learning your line yeah. learning your track is very important sure and autocross is like the miniature version to do that sure. mm-hmm. so it's always a great place to start and it's yeah. cheap 
It's yeah, great. and I think that was incorporated with what Katie did. Oh, no, that was an autocrat. Yeah. Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember awesome. they used to do that at the Camarillo yeah. Airport, um, and I wish they still did that because yeah. there's not a lot of places to go to autocross now that they closed Auto Club Speedway because a yeah. lot of it was done there. Yeah, and they used to do it at the... Um, the um, the forum down in L.A. Yeah. That's where I went, and I, I think they stopped doing oh, the that. parking lot. Yeah, the parking yeah. lot. Yeah, so it's fun. Yeah, and typically you uh, you work. So like I would run, and then I would have my shift during the day where I would work. So I would stand out there if somebody hit a cone, I'd run and yeah. So you a get a little bit of a workout yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say, as somebody who drives a lot between where we live and down south to San Diego to see family and that sort of thing, the way people drive today. On the freeways is yeah. crazy. So I think it's really, I think it's really yes. behooves all of us drivers yeah. to know how our cars respond. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 To everything. Yes. Yep. Oh, I mean, and I've been driving Beth's 61 Corvair. And one thing about those brakes, well, you got to anticipate. Yes. Yeah. You so yeah. you're right. Every car is different. Every yeah. car is a different feel. The brakes yes. are different. Steering's different. Yeah. And it's, that's so true. When yeah. I, um, I had been driving my Subaru for years and then I got my 240 back, which is rear wheel drive. And I got so babied by my all wheel drive <laughs> that I remember the first time I was driving my 240 in the rain Ooh. and I came up a little too fast on the stop and I lost it. I like <laughs> swirled. Ooh. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, remember, this is not all wheel drive. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Take it, take a step back. You know, remember you have a real wheel drive car. Is Are you, <laughs> you say you're a fast driver. Are you a patient driver? Unfortunately, no. And I and that's the hard part because I always tell people, I'm so sorry if you have seen me somewhere because you remember <laughs> my car and I was mean or I, I think what it is, is it's not that I'm I just like to drive fast, unfortunately. Um, and so I like to just get where I need to go and I like to drive fast and I enjoy driving. So it that's what part of the reason why I want to get a car that's maybe not so crazy because I feel like it will tone me down just a little it'll, bit. It'll force you to slow down, right? You have lead you have lead in your vans, don't you? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but that's again, that's one of the reasons why I like driving my 240 now because my 240 is the slow car. Um mm -hmm. it's not the fast car. It's a cruiser and I I only take it to shows and stuff. So I I kind of like driving that, especially now that I'm like getting closer to my late 40s <laughs> i feel like i need to tone it down just a little bit so going to like car shows and cruises and stuff is kind of nicer speaking of shows you just did did a show this week yes. past weekend right yeah we had a big show we did yesterday called cars and coffee classics in anaheim um and it's run by izzy and his team of guys they're amazing they put on the best Cars and coffee besides Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> um, it's great because they rent the entire promenade of Anaheim. And it, so it's shut down. And um, they have the racetrack comes in. Uh, Frank and his team come in. Oh, and then yeah, the, uh, the Hot Wheels, right? The, huh, the Hot yeah. Wheels. And, and that's how I met him, by the way, was at those events. Because this was our third women-themed event that we did with them. Mm -hmm. And... It's mostly JDM classics, but everybody's welcome to come. So you get a really good mix of cars. How many people show up? How many people? How many um, well, oh, sounds big. On a typical day, I think it's like two to 300 people yeah. because I think there's enough space for parking for a couple hundred, but there's a parking garage there as well. And so when that fills up, because it always fills up, you have to get there early and then it fills up. And then there's the overflow in the parking garage. And so sometimes you have a whole car show in the parking garage. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the, a lot of photographers and, and videographers come and they'll just hit the parking garage because there's amazing cars in there. So wow. it's, everybody who slept in ends up in the parking garage. Right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Talking to the yeah. women that you that you work with um, and, and help and try to encourage, do you find them wanting to come to more events like Cars and Coffee or do they like the track events or is it any particular? Well, so mostly cars it's mostly car shows there's a, a lot more girls that do shows there's not a whole lot of girls that are into racing there i'm seeing a big shift recently hmm. um and actually covid it's kind of funny covid did something it i think a lot more women were getting out there and driving um because there was no more car shows like everything just kind of stopped hmm. so so I think a lot of girls were getting out there and driving, going going for cruises. You know, people could be in their cars and still meet up. And so I noticed a lot more drivers after COVID. Um, but for the most part, there are 
a ton of car girls and they maybe aren't interested in racing. They're just interested in showing their cars. Um, and, and it's a huge age range too. I have young girls out there who are 16, 17, and they bring their cars out. And there are some women that I meet that are in their eighties and they wow. come out with their cars That's and cool. it's awesome. I love it. And I love the stories. So I love hearing all the stories. I love meeting all the people. Um, you're in the right place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. Uh, the, the, Cars and Coffee Classics that we do is great because it's in a good location. A lot of the women tend to be more in L.A. area. So I think uh, on a typical lady-driven day, we get maybe between 100 and 150 women out there with Ooh. their cars. Um, That's a good crowd. Yeah. It, our very first one we did was amazing. Um, we had people who are a little upset because the lines were going back to the freeway. Wow. There were so many people trying to get in and we ran out of space. So the whole parking garage was full. It was crazy. Um, so we got a really good response on it. And that's why um, Izzy, uh, I think, is cool with doing like a couple a year. So we, we try and do like one, two a year. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, they, they've they got their stuff down there <laughs> is he and them where they're so good at their what they do and that's one of the reasons why i love doing events with them um because they're also a little more old school i'm kind of old school um i i especially i, I tend that's one of the things so i'm known as car mom out in the car industry because most of the people that i'm around are in their 20s mm. uh, i'm <laughs> i'm like the old lady of the car scene <laughs> so, so for me it's it's funny because i'm a little old school and so i like doing events sometimes with with izzy especially because they're they're around my age and it just makes things a little easier sometimes um but i've done so many show i've done shows that here at the shop down the street and um I think we got maybe like 60 or 70 girls that came out. Oh, wow. Yeah. The whole parking lot was full. Cool. It was really cool. And then um, we've done the track days where we try and get all female run groups where it's all just girls doing one run. Mm -hmm. But if we don't get enough girls, we want to be fair to everyone and make sure everybody has the same track time. So then we'll just mix it up a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, for the most part, it's been... Awesome. I, I have, we have our first drift event coming up where we're doing, I'm doing a co-hosting with another company called Drift Depot. Um, he's real big in the drift industry, but he's collaborating with me. So we're doing like a, it's, we, I think we have maybe five girls signed up to do that event. Um, but the tickets has they sold out within like 10 hours. That's cool. So, you know, if, if somebody was interested in what you've been talking about, all these uh -huh. shows or, you know, drifting or whatever, and if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, how could they get in touch with you to get more information about all these things that we've talked about? So my Miss Motorhead page on Instagram is where I I put everything. I put all of the events. Um, that page is also a feature page. So when I meet a woman somewhere or uh, I see somebody online who I'd like to feature, I put features of people on there so that other girls can meet other car girls. Mm. Um and I and that's not just cars. I I feature women with motorcycles, off road vehicles, trucks, um, cars, pretty much everything is on that page. Um, but I also just started Miss Motorhead Racing, so I have a racing page that's going to be dedicated to just racing. So the Miss Motorhead page is the main page uh, for events and everything everything related to it. But then the Miss Motorhead Racing is going to be this little niche kind of racing chapter of it where i'm going to try and sponsor more women at the track and do more track events and stuff like that so you have so. three instagram handles then unfortunately <laughs> i manage five instagrams <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard i because i have my day job i have my personal page lane drifters i have miss motorhead miss motorhead racing and then i have the lane drifters apparel which i'm phasing out so Wow, yeah, it's a lot. Social yeah. media is a lot. Yes, <laughs> a lot it, of is. Work. yes it is. Are you getting a crook in your neck because you're old? <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird for me because I'm an older woman. I don't like social media. Is like oh, like this big I'm monster. Just, I yeah, I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head around it all the time, and it's it's constantly changing. There's all these like rules and algorithms, and yeah, and luckily I have um a, one of my I call her my car daughter Alma. She, I've known her since I think like for four years now, and she's been there from day one for Miss Motorhead. So she's my car daughter slash my marketing girl. And she, 
She does a lot for me. She does a lot of shows with me. Um, and so she's 21. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she kind of gets it. Like, yeah. and so I rely on her for a lot of like the younger stuff. Um, she's got a lot of great connections with friends and she's, and she's such a sweet, awesome girl. I got super lucky with her. So, um, so luckily I have like, I, I'm, I'm kind of old school, but I have like the ties with the younger girls and stuff. So it keeps me up on my social media. Stuff. It's important. I cried several times during <laughs> remote work and during the pandemic and my youngest daughter yeah. had to come help save me. Yeah, I feel you. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. And I even have the little warning that comes up on my phone that says, you're getting too much screen time. Oh, yeah. Tone it down. <laughs> I have like a little alarm that says, okay. Over That's hard when you manage five Instagram yeah, accounts yeah. and you're business yeah. is online yeah. And, yeah. yeah it's it's really hard and i've i've also struggled with the my personal page which is lane drifters it's my personal page but it but i'm in my hobby my life is cars so mm -hmm. although it has my personal stuff on it i don't put my really really personal stuff like my kids and mm -hmm. i don't tend to put a lot of that stuff on there but it is my personal page and so i'm trying to keep up on that but it's but ha having a business in the industry, in the car industry, it's they all kind of cross paths, yeah. and so it's it gets a little tricky at the times. I'm sure you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, everybody that I know. I, I was actually thinking about it last night. Everybody that I know um, is through cars. Oh. I mean, it's crazy. I I mean, I came to Ventura because of cars. You know, because of, of a friend that I met because of cars. You know, I met you because of yeah. Cars. I mean, <laughs> oh, we've been talking about everybody knows everybody. Yeah, you go to a show and it's like, oh, so and so knows so and so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the network of people. That's why I th th think is really interesting and and important too to talk about women because you have to include women. Like back in the day, I don't want to date ourselves since we were both at the same event mm -hmm. at Bell Imports. But you see, see somebody like Lisa Kubo, mm -hmm. drag racing. She's literally the only female. And she was fast. She was no joke. Yes. Like she goes toe to toe with the dudes. And she was the first, uh, I think it was seven. She was like the fastest import back in, I what was it like 2004? I don't even remember. I, I don't want to say wrong yeah. specs, but she is very well known in the drag racing industry, and um, and like I said, she really was. There was maybe a couple of girls out there. Yeah, and when the, when the imports started to get some not notice from like you know um, the NHRA and like be they did some exhibition events where they brought some of the fastest Hondas or whatever imports to a NHRA sanctioned event, you know, and of course they get hated on, you know, like typical, you know, which is fine, whatever. Um, but she was one of those drivers, mm -hmm. so it was like a female. So and there's been. Female female drag racers forever and actually there was this a uh, uh, story i read about how they tested the reaction times of females versus males mm -hmm. and they said and hey i don't i didn't write the article someone did that they said that females had a faster reaction time I than believe men mm -hmm. which, of the test yeah. you know which is plausible because there's yeah. a lot of fast female yeah. drag racers mm -hmm. a lot of them yeah you know so i was like oh maybe there's something to that yeah. but i wish there was more you well, know yes. Sur surely yeah. moldani was one of the ones i i knew of, i don't am i going way <laughs> way way yeah. surely moldani well but there's people that though the people that know what you're saying are dating themselves too so yeah i guess you're relatable I right, look, for not being the a blank car look guy i got from everybody for, was like for not being a car guy <laughs> what was her nickname <laughs> Ooh, shoot. Dan, you know so this. You know her? You? You know I, this I do know this because my dad used to drag race. And oh. used to go to Lions and stuff. Wait, the Mr. 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 Non-Car uh, Guy? I know. Your dad was a drag racer, Mr. Non-Car? I, I was going to call I think, on you. We weren't hearing from you. I'm like, Dan, you know to say. Well, Dan uh, is hiding stuff from us. He's actually a car guy. Watch. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I know I'm going to get this What wrong, is it? What I'm, is it? But I thought, oh, man. It wasn't Mo Mongoose, was it? No. No, that was, uh, was uh, Prudhomme was, was Mongoose. Was wasn't Prudhomme it? Mongoose? One of them was Mongoose. Man, we obviously okay, we don't know okay, what the hell we're talking it? about. We don't know. Who is it? What is it? I, I believe her name was Cha-Cha. Really? Early Cha-Cha Muldowney. Yeah. Gee, I, someone's going to fact check I, I this. Yeah, someone's going to. See, I'm not a car guy, so if I screwed it up, <laughs> no biggie. But but yeah, but oh, my point was, <laughs> yeah. and I, I know I dated myself by the blank looks, but <laughs> Shirley Muldowney was really, I mean, 70s? Tell me, Dan. 70s? Yeah, yeah it would have been 80s? 70s yeah. if I would have been a kid. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. so, But she ruled. Yeah. yeah. I, Everybody knew Shirley I know Muldown. the name. I just don't know, like, the story. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but cool. there's some history. Way back there. A lot of history, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know about Jungle Pam, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw her. I saw her I, uh, in, who, in real who, life. Who didn't? Oh, real? Oh. Wow. No, in real life, I saw her. Yeah, she was She was something. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
Anyway. I don't know this the ladies one. are we'll going, get, who we'll are you talking about? We'll have to get an image of Jungle Pam. <laughs> Who's Jungle, Jungle Pam? Pam is, yeah. Yeah. She was... Uh, she was. Uh, she changed the game in drag racing for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that sounds like another show. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. All right. Oh. Yeah, it's funny, too, because I... Um, although I had some family in the domestic scene, I never really grew up in the domestic scene. I, I kind of started with um, imports. Yeah. So, so that's why I've always kind of been this JDM kind of cl- i love 80s and 90s jdm like that's my favorite yeah as far as cars go so but not necessarily because my dream car <laughs> is the bmw e31 the oh, 850 yeah, okay. yeah csi in particular um what is it dynan dynan that they only yeah. made like, oh, yeah, dynan yeah. they made a few hundred of those yeah d-i-n-a-n i think that's what yeah. it is yeah. Dynan, that, yeah that's that's my dream car so that eventually I will get one of those one day. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here dying to pick up my phone and Google mongoose. <laughs> no, I, I just looked Did it up. Sh- it? Shirley Cha Cha Moldani was, yeah, that okay. was her nickname. Yeah. Damn. You want to look up Jungle Pam. So who's Pam? mongoose? Which one was the mongoose? Oh, you, you definitely want to. Dan's looking up Jungle Pam Jungle right now Pam. on the computer, aren't you, Dan? Well, I know Jungle Pam. Yeah. I mean, I could look her up. Yeah. Dude. Our buddy Steve Feist knows Jungle Pam, too. So he's got a, he's got a artwork from uh, like a photo montage. Oh, yeah. Artwork yeah. From her, yeah. <laughs> hey, while, while we're talking about this, Christina, what is your day job? So I work in ad specialties. So I branding, basically, I put people's logos on things. So I typically do on a day business cards, letterhead, but I also get to create logos and art for um, the automotive scene is kind of morphed into my day job. So I get a lot of Mm -hmm. my friends who come to me for stuff. Um, But yeah, I typically do a lot of promotional products. It's kind of what I do in my day job, which has helped me because I love being creative and I love working on art. Um, Like I made my logo. Um, And so it's helped me because I also have merch that I sell for Miss Motorhead. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of allowed me to be creative in my own way. And and I know a lot about apparel. And so, um, so everything just seems to kind of go hand in hand with yeah. my day and job, in, so. in this business especially in the automotive everything's branding logo appearance uh-huh. you know yeah. you've got to brand yourself everything has a brand i mean even the cars and coffees have brands yeah. now so i mean yeah. it's almost you can't avoid right. that right. right so it's gonna happen regardless whether you want it to or not right yeah, yeah it's fun I, i've been doing that for like 20 years so it's it's a lot of fun i'll end up um actually they're the owners are gonna be retiring so i'll be buying that business in uh, probably about a year so yeah, and it's right around the corner from here. <laughs> so That's very it cool. It took me about a minute yeah. to come over here. <laughs> Speaking of branding, do you have kind of a mantra? Mine is I'm just along for the ride, which I love. Do you have a mantra with all that you do? You know, not really. I mean, when I when somebody asks me, like, what is Miss Motorhead? I, I basically just let people know that I'm a support system for women in all motorsports. Um, but not really. I I feel like I have this, like, mantra in life of of just having fun i mean life is so short that mm-hmm. like you just have to enjoy life i i've been through the ringer a, a few things and i i've just learned that like life is so short i've had people pass away unexpectedly and there were so many things they wanted to do in life and so as soon as i um I think a couple of years ago, I finally made myself a bucket list and I've been trying to check everything off my bucket mm. list. <laughs> so get the old car back was one of them. It right? was actually, yeah, that cool. was on my bucket list. I had on there. It's funny. One of the things on my bucket list that's been on my bucket list for about two years now, since I met Natasha is I wanted Natasha on my podcast. Uh, Natasha is amazing in, in Natasha the Adams, right? Natasha Adams. Yeah. Yes. And I, uh, I, I, one time I was like, I would love to interview her while she's taking me off roading. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's what we can do. How about that? So to help her knock off the last one of the last ones, we will give up the studio. <laughs> and have Natasha come in. We're going to put the pressure on Natasha. To come in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she she's going to join it. us yeah. in the studio, and she's, we'll she's we'll awesome. let you just take over. How's that? She's awesome. I love her. But yeah, the bucket list thing. I always recommend everybody, and I hang my bucket list on my refrigerator because I feel like you need to see it. I like to see it every day. I like to be reminded that there are these things that are important to me, and I'm going to get them done. I'm going to do them, and. Um, yeah, I've I've worked really hard at trying to get them all done. It's it is hard because I I'm a mother first, like that's my job. So 
trying to fit all of this stuff into my life um, is tricky, but my kids are now going off to college. And so it's more so about me now. So I'm trying to like, you know, figure life out and get it all done. Yeah. <laughs> but you said, you know, you, um, you like the car mom and then uh -huh. you're, um, you know, the, the women that you help the usually, you know, 20 uh -huh. or whatever. And your mantra is helping others, yeah. you know, get, yeah. uh, you know, I'm sure some of the females watching this too, um, uh, might, experience some of the things that are the challenges that you've had to experience yourself and mm -hmm. stuff that you'd like to impart to them. What would you say to some, uh, a female right now that wants to go to a car show or wants to go racing or wants to go drifting or whatever, and, but is just hesitant. What would, yeah. what would you say to her to encourage her to just go and do it? You know, right. cause I'm sure that's the barrier. The first barrier, right. Is to just get up and yes. do it. Yes. So one of the things I think that has helped in that sense is um like if i know if i meet somebody and they say oh i really want to go to a track day but i don't know anybody out there and i'm nervous or whatever i will be the one to be like okay what day do you have this day free i will come and we will drive there together so i i think if they have just someone by their side same thing with a car show if i have someone that's like i want to take my car but it's not like in tip top shape and it's not a car show car. I'm like, everyone has started somewhere and you'd be surprised. A lot of people appreciate stock cars now. Oh, yeah. Like not, not everybody likes cars that have all kinds of stuff done to them. A lot of people so, like dirt. Yeah. Don't clean it. Just show up. <laughs> right? Well, it shows you're driving your car. Yeah, so, exactly. so I tell them like you, you, you cannot, and not, you will never make everybody happy. You have to make you happy. So if it makes you happy with the idea of you bringing your car to a car show, that one first car show, once you get that done, you will be set up and good to go for all the other car shows. Yeah. You will be fine. I was actually, I still get really nervous. I put my car in JCCS for the <laughs> first time. Mm. And JCCS is one of those shows in my eyes that I look up to. It's like, like I love that show. Up I've been there. going to it for years. Yeah. It is it is everything I love, <laughs> which is JDM. Mm -hmm. And it's old school JDM, which I love. And I was so intimidated to put my car in the show because I kept thinking, well, everybody else's car is so much nicer than my car. Like, I just can't. I just and my buddy Elaine, uh, one of my best friends, he he was like, he's like, no, like you, your car is mostly stock, but it's super clean. And the, even just the story behind your car makes yeah. it special. So you need to bring it. And I'm like, OK, so I did. I signed up. I didn't even think they would accept it. I was like, it's not even going to get accepted into the show. And it did. And I remember jumping up and down in my office <laughs> like, oh, my God, this is really happening. So even for me, I, I still have that intimidation factor. Mm -hmm. But I when I did go to JCCS and I had my car on the lawn and I saw it sitting there. And I had people, I would, I would stand in the background and I could see people taking pictures of it. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, my car. <laughs> so, I always think that when people take pictures of my car, they're doing it to talk crap about my car. On oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Insecurity. No. Is that's why I don't like going to car shows. Yeah, yeah no, it's, <laughs> but that's, and, but then it's not the case. Cause then I would be, I remember a few times just going on Instagram and somebody who I don't know posted a picture of my car and they'd be like this beautiful car. I'm Aww. like, oh. Oh, like, like that's my car. So, so even I do still get intimidated once in a while. But I think what it is is it's the act of just showing up. So I always tell people once you just show up and you're there and you do it and you leave, you feel empowered. Like that's just how it is. Yeah. And all the fears that you had really aren't going to happen. Nope. Yeah. They, they never do. I'll be honest yep. with you. It's never really happened. I've only one time have had someone make a backhanded comment about my car, but. But in, in all honesty, yeah, my car is not up to par. It's not like a show car. <laughs> so yeah. it's fine. Everybody's going to have their opinions. Mm -hmm. You just have to not take it to heart. So, yeah. 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 I think that's great advice. Yeah. That's great advice. Because I mean, for guys and girls, you know, not, you know and that, not just with cars, with anything. With life. You know, yeah, yeah. with life. life. So, yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. you're definitely applying your car, you know, uh, you know, mantras. Actually, it's your life mantras if yeah. you think about it, you know. Right. So, well, Frank said the same thing, and when he was in a couple of weeks ago, uh, De Jesus with the old Japanese, yeah, I mean, he said the same thing. He goes, People pull up and they, uh, I don't know if my car belongs here. Uh, every car belongs yes. here. Who cares what how yeah. dirty it is or yeah. what it yeah. looks like? Just, as, yes. just join us, you know. Well, and that's the one thing I love about Ventura Cars and Coffee. So, 
One of my most favorite things, to be honest with you, is not necessarily even my car. It's the people. Yeah. So I have formed so many friendships from that car show. Same here. Same so here. and they're and I pull up and I know they're going to be there like Gary and John and Becky. Like, yeah. There are just people there who I pull up and I'm just so excited because like I get to just see my like car friends. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I, I think it's one of those things too, especially because it's one of the things about cars and coffee in general, not just the Ventura one, um, but particularly the Ventura one um, where I I'll go there, I'll pull up and I'll see the guys that I'm expecting to see uh, or girls mm -hmm. and um, have a conversation and not see any of the other cars because I'm too busy talking yeah. for an hour and a half and I'm like, oh, I got to go home now or whatever. But that's the cool part. You know, it's uh, and we share in stories. It's not so mm -hmm. much. The cars are just the medium, but the really the stories behind them. That's why we're here yeah. at Westlake Tulsa. We just want to capture these stories, right. you know, and eventually well, I'd like to have uh, John and Becky and um, Gary on the yeah. show because they're, they're character. They're like staples for events. Yeah, you know, I did a track day with Gary. Well, the last time I went to streets, he came. He was there. So it was so much fun to see him out on the tracks. His car is so fun yeah. to watch. Gary yeah. is, uh, was his uh, handle? Lights? Lights G GTO. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. And uh, he has a uh, Nissan Skyline um, a GT GTR. Uh -huh. um, and it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting it's 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 black with these uh pink um kind of like ins race inspired like kind of like design ad, almost ad advan, advan yeah. yeah there's a famous uh, japanese race car that is black and red but he did black and pink, pink. and it's pretty wild i like it yeah, you know it has some, different color wheels it has yeah. bright yellow and you can't miss this yeah. car okay. it's like it stands out but the guy's super super cool this is you know, really funny and, you know, he's just a really good guy to, like, kind of chat with. Yeah. So he's just, just a character. He just goes to all these shows and he's a photographer, too, I think. Uh -huh. yeah, um, he's so, a really good photographer. We've yeah. met the yeah. nicest, neatest people through cars. We really yes. have. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It just, it draws a really interesting salt of the earth kind of person. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. And I and I have noticed, too, with being a woman uh, in automotive, like, um, I... I do try and go up and talk to people. It's hard for me sometimes because I, I do, I am as much as social as I am, I, I do get nervous talking to people, but I have noticed that um, people just come up and talk to me now, which is great. I, and so it's, I feel like it's gotten more comfortable for people. maybe after COVID. I think COVID did something to the car industry and yeah. I think people were so tired of being home and not being social yep. yeah. and i feel like now i feel like things have gotten way more social because even before covid i don't remember going to car shows and it being so friendly and mm. like and forming all these bonds yeah. with people so well, and, well, yeah. and now that you've been on west of tulsa it's going to be just maddening <laughs> it was on her approach you all over the place <laughs> it was on her bucket supermarkets list, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're I, not going to be able to go anywhere <laughs> you've been in west of tulsa yeah I, knows. I, I it's funny i was so excited uh, to be honest with you like i um I, I did my podcast, but I was super nervous even doing my podcast, but to be interviewed by other people, because I was on my friend's podcast uh, a couple years ago. He has a Subaru podcast, so he interviews people with Subarus. And so, but his was just over the phone. It was, it was mm -hmm. the phone thing. Yeah, this is so. a different setting. This is isn't? different, yeah. yeah. And it's funny when you say, like, if people see you out and about, um, I remember the first time I was ever noticed for my car stuff. I was driving in traffic somewhere like a few hours from here. I don't know if it was like San Bernardino. And I was sitting in uh, my Subaru in sitting in bumper to bumper traffic. And this person pulls up next to me. And they're like, oh, my God, it's Motorhead. And I was, I was like, what is going on? And I rolled my window down. And I was oh, like, funny. hi. And she's like, oh, my God, I love your events. And she, it was the sweetest thing ever. And I literally like she I cried like in my car. Cause That's it, was, cool. it was so sweet. It was like the first time somebody actually like said something that I wasn't a close friend or something. So when you so I do see people uh, on occasion out in public that I don't know or like uh, the other day I was driving and I pulled up at a stoplight behind a car and it was a random car and they had my sticker on the window <laughs> and I'm like I kind of took a double take like I think that's my sticker it was my speed nuts um, design that mm -hmm. I made and my daughter had her camera that she had rented from college so it was this like fancy camera and she's like oh my gosh I'm gonna take photos so she like was zooming in on it and taking photos and I was like this is so weird it feels weird to like see my art out on some random car so 
There, there are instances now where, like, I see, I'll see a miss, I uh, saw somebody wearing a Miss Motorhead T-shirt in a different state. Wow! I, oh, I was like, gosh. this is so weird. This is is so, to be I recognized on a freeway though is pretty amazing. Yeah, that and was bumper traffic. Pretty that's funny. Awesome. That was pretty. My, I mean, my car kind of stands out a little bit, so I'm sure she saw my car and she was like, oh yeah, that's Miss Motorhead. Mm. But that was a weird moment for me because I was like, that, that was so sweet, and just the fact that she was so excited. I, I, the fact that I can make someone be comfortable enough and excited enough to like go to a show is like like everything yeah. and scream so, at you on the freeway yeah and scream at me on the freeway <laughs> yeah, pretty, that's pretty cool yeah it was pretty funny I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm afraid to ask this next question uh oh okay <laughs> where'd speed nuts come from oh okay so <laughs> yeah it's a do it's the donut okay so there, there's the donut shop um what was it um so it's speed nuts a donut shop is my art. So basically, it's a donut. It says Speed Nuts. Oh, instead of Spud Nuts? Instead of Spud Nuts. It's speed nuts. <laughs> so that's why I, I created okay, that good. one. Right. Yeah, that's right. And thank you for saying that because I couldn't remember the name of the donut shop. But yes, Spud Nuts. So I took Definitely it dating I, ourselves because I don't yes, think yeah, young people know what Spud Nuts is. That's right. Spudnuts exactly. Still. Do we still cool. have Spud Nuts? Do, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where Speed Nuts came from. And then and then I have on top of the donut, there's two cars that are drifting on the donut. Uh -huh. so, oh. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We, we couldn't have left today without knowing what speed nuts and where that came from. So wait, wait, are, are we ending the show on that? Or I, I, like, if you have more questions, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to elaborate on speed nuts, I'm ready. <laughs> Actually, no, you do have a sticker. I think I just saw you posted about something about. Um, if oh. I did, if I do have, if I did have balls, they'd be bigger than yours. Yes. Oh. Oh, that's okay. Funny. I have a couple stickers that are like <laughs> one of my biggest sellers. The first one I created was, if I had balls, they'd be bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> that one, uh, it actually went over really well. <laughs> I could imagine. With yeah. women, I and would imagine. With women, but I also had lots of men buy it, and then they stick it on their friend's bumper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is good. And That's a good. few of them didn't notice it for weeks. <laughs> That wow. And so I've That's had comments funny. like that. So guys sometimes buy it as a joke. Oh. That's funny. And then the other one I sell a lot of at the shows, like yesterday I sold a few, is the one that says, my other right is your dad. <laughs> Oh, and, oh, oh. That one is uh, it's a little more harsh, but I sell a ton of them and I got so many guys who were like, well, I want one that says mom. And I'm like, okay. So I made one for the guys and it says my other right is your mom. So, but I have women <laughs> who, who requested that too. Wow. So anyways, I, I, but that's the thing with me. I am not normal. <laughs> Are okay. any of us really? I'm not normal. I mean, we have I'm a show normal. about cars. <laughs> I'm not normal. I'm a I'm a, a bit crude with my humor sometimes. I mean, I've been in the car industry for so long. Yeah. A lot of my friends are car guys, and so I've just gotten used to having this certain humor, and um, it's a bit much for some people. But I incorporated that into Miss Motorhead a little bit, and I think that's what people appreciate about it is that it's not. It's just, it's just me. I, I just go for it. <laughs> Life is short. I think we buried the lead. I was just going to say, I think we buried the lead. Yeah, we yeah. should have started with we, all Yeah, of this. that's right. Well, that is <laughs> so uh, since, you know, um, with all the, the, the popularity with male and females by, by mm -hmm. buying those stickers and stuff, mm -hmm. I'll just, I'm going to ask this question. Um, is the, the single people, the single females and single, would you say that the car show, the cars and coffee scene would be um, helpful for the single guys and gals to meet each other? I'm not saying you should hook up, but, you know, is this, uh, I mean, because we're people yeah. and, you know, if the single people, yes. like Helm, he's yeah. single still. Yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so this is a tricky subject for me because I've been single for a couple of years. I, I'm divorced. And um, because I have so many friends in the car industry, I try not to date in the car industry because it can get awkward if you date someone and then you go to car shows and this, yeah. this is a whole show time. i can oh. tell you this is a whole yeah. show yeah. Right. Yeah. What's, relationships what's, and cars what's yeah. funny about that is i was invited to be on a dating app that is for car people what there is a dating it app exists? for car people. well there's an app for everything now, i, I guess. know that they they're on instagram they messaged me and i um I joined it for a little while, but then I got, I got off of it. What's but, it called? Uh, you know what? I, I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'd have to oh, look okay. it up, but um, I, I can let you guys know. But it's it's uh, it's kind of funny because – but the thing is, is it's all over the U.S. And so I was finding that 
I was one of the only women like in California. So I was getting a million messages <laughs> and it was kind of overwhelming. So I, yeah. I ended up just deleting the app, but it, I thought it was cool. It's a great app. I mean, yeah. I, I, always, everybody used to tell me, when are you going to start a Subaru dating app? Mm. Because I had so many Subaru people <laughs> because I was big in the Subaru world. Yeah. And I, um, and so I had single Subaru girls and I, at one time was a matchmaker and I was trying to set people up. And mm -hmm. so everybody was like, well, when are you going to start a Subaru dating app? And I'm like, yeah. do you feel it's important for guys and girls, if, especially the car people to share that car um, passion? Or do you think it's just, it's not necessary I mean, obviously it's not necessary, but do you think it's, uh, would you encourage like the, some of the females that you talk to, to find a mate that might be into cars too, or yeah. would you say it doesn't matter? Well, okay. So I'll bring myself into this for a little while because I, for a long time, tried to find somebody I could date in the car scene because I wanted somebody I could have in common, like mm -hmm. stuff in common with. And it's just really hard because what I've found with car people and me included is that you're all about your cars. And I was noticing like when I tried to date car guys who are really into cars, they, they're just not that interested in like, they like the idea of dating, but their life is their cars. Mm. That's all weekend long. Uh, you shouldn't their be cars. agreeing. She's <laughs> <laughs> not in her head. Wait oh my goodness. Your head should be moving that like that. I can't stop it. <laughs> Yeah, cars. It's especially people who have uh, YouTube channels or uh, yeah. and and like they they make money monetizing. Yeah. Um, they will spend weekends creating their their content, and there's no time for dating. So it's really hard to to date car people. I would love to date a car person if I could find someone, but I just. Yeah, it's tricky. Do you think there's competition? Like, like if your car was better than his car, do you think that might be a problem? Nope. No, because I'd win all the time. So <laughs> no, no, there, there's be, no competition. You, you think it'd be a problem for the guy? <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> I, 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 I can feel another bumper sticker coming. Uh, yeah, <laughs> giving me some good ideas here. <laughs> no, I don't. You're going to so. say something. No, I think I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I can tell by the look on your face. There's a little bit of an obsession, though. Yeah, I used that word a, a few podcasts yeah. ago, but I think that's an accurate word. Yeah, yeah, there is. It's especially for me. I, I. My weekends are cars. Like I go to car shows and or races, and so it can be tricky for people who maybe have a car obsession because it's uh, yeah. I think obsession is probably a good word for it because <laughs> I mean it's it's a hobby, but it becomes an obsession when you you tend to overwrite all the other hobbies. Yeah, <laughs> so. you see, Beth, it's not just guys. <laughs> no, it's not. No, I, I understand. You, you might have thought it was God. I think. Guys, I think but. the one with all the wonderful positive things. The one negative for me is obsessing about a car that's just sitting there, and for me, I want to go. Sit, somewhere. Wait, sitting there in do, person or just? Sit just I want to. I want to go from A to B. I don't want to just stay at A and look at A. Does oh, that make sense? Okay. so you want to go I mean, use that car? You yeah, don't want to just look at it. I, I, you know what, yes, Beth? I'm yeah. with you. Yeah, I'm with you on that one because the thing. And I, look, I know it's going to piss off a lot of car collectors. Is that I can't stand a car that you can't drive or don't want to drive. I can't stand it. That's why I don't like painting cars anymore. Because the second I paint the car, I don't want to drive it because the paint's so nice. I'm like, yes. that's not what this, I did this yeah. for. Yeah. You know, so I I agree with you, Beth, 100%. Yeah. Because a car is meant to be driven, Absolutely. not just looked at. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely. Yep. I agree. And I, um, but again, there there are those people who just, that's that's their thing. They collect cars and they want them pristine. They won't do anything with them. But yeah. I am not, I'm the type that I'm hands on. I like to drive and that is one of the reasons why i will drive two hours for a car show yeah because i like driving there and i like driving home yeah. so i get yeah. a little bit That's of a good way to do it's all part yeah. of it's all yeah. part of the event you know yeah. driving right. is the part yeah. of the event yeah. Yeah. and when you do yeah. real quickly when yeah. you do the rallies are those destination rallies sometimes yeah sometimes um we'll do like if we know there's say there's an event in la somewhere and it's like you know a couple hours or an hour to drive there um we will get together a, a cruise and and we'll all drive together out to the event um or sometimes we'll do a photo shoot. we'll want to take a do a cool photo shoot somewhere at a beach somewhere and we'll all just drive and do a photo shoot somewhere um but yeah um typically people love cruising together like a lot of like anytime we have a car show somewhere uh i always know someone in the area is gonna probably have their car there so we'll try and connect with other people and all rally out there and so cool. yeah yeah I like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> any other questions yeah. no I'm, I'm 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 good i, no. I don't want to 
do anything that I'm going to regret. Uh oh. <laughs> that would never happen, Gabe. No, never. Oh, would. No. <laughs> <laughs> We are so happy you joined us today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. This is this is so much fun. I love it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you guys having well, you're, me. You're great. It's so. really nice meeting you. We thank covered you. a lot of ground today. Did we? Okay, good. We did. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> I never thought we'd get into bumper stickers. I didn't think we'd get that far into it. <laughs> we could have a whole but show. I'm glad we, we did. could have a whole show on bumper, bumper stickers. Yeah. Oh my god, that yeah. would be so fun. For sure. <laughs> I think we're gonna nominate Christina as one of our panel members for our <laughs> Show. She's, she's gonna have to come up with a couple fresh ones for. Uh, I have. I actually have a lot saved that are probably a little too crude. That oh, oh we're, you're gonna have to I, drop them on the show. I know. We're gonna have to drop on the show the uh, debut. Let's yeah. premiere them. Yeah, let's just premiere. Premiere yeah. bumper stickers. I, I'll tell you. I mean, I have the one on my car that says "My other right is your dad," and I will. I'm to be honest with you. I feel bad sometimes if I go through <laughs> like where I know there's gonna be a lot of kids. I, oh, I, I because I'm a mom, so like I do feel bad, but at the same time, I'm like. I am what I am. Like I, that's just how I am. So, but um, yeah. What does that I, mean? What What does that mean? Yeah, I, mean, right. I, I see that. Yeah. Rides my dad. What yeah. Does that mean? And I have girls who will buy the ball sticker, <laughs> and they won't put it on the outside of their car, but they'll put it on their engine bay. So, <laughs> so at least when they're open so for that. shows, that's they're awesome. okay with it. Awesome. They're okay with it, but then they can close it. I and like that. They, they're okay. <laughs> so. I like that. We should definitely do a show with favorite bumper stickers. You could because yeah, there's some several. really really good. There, ones. Are, there are some my, really good. My favorite one right now is um, uh, mostly their diesel uh, pickup, like 2,500 pickup trucks, as I identify as a Prius. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite yep. one right now. Yep. I mean, it's definitely uh, current for the time. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I've seen that one. I saw uh, – there's a few that I saw, uh, like, people po put on their cars, the old school cars typically. It's Shipbox Edition. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or uh, caution parts may fall off, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. So, yeah, those are the cleaner yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, those are the cleaner yeah. ones. <laughs> um, well, thank you again. Yeah, oh, yeah. thank great, you guys. I appreciate you. I love, you, I love your podcast. I'm so excited to like. I think the only regret is that we didn't have to make you drive farther. Together. I, uh, I know, right? <laughs> Darn. If, after hearing this, all right. <laughs> thank you. All right, and don't forget, we got our tip line up. Go to our tip line, go to westintulsa.com, go to the tip line page, fill it out. We'd love to have you here in studio telling your stories. <laughs> Don't forget, follow, like, subscribe. We also have our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching West of Tulsa. <laughs>